Big Bend Ranch State Park. This place is awesome. Really excited to go explore the backcountry of Big Bend Ranch, and then I'm going to do a similar type trip through Big Bend National Park. And they allow you to drive into their backcountry, and they have designated um, primitive camping sites that are accessible by four wheel drive. The route is being calculated. The sign just said that there's 27 miles to the park headquarters, which is on this um, nicely maintained but still pretty washboarded dirt road, gravel road. So I am going to air down the tires and the revel to make a softer, smoother ride. To do this, I'm going to use the ARB Easy Deflator. This thing works great. It lets me basically remove my valve stem while this is attached and let a lot of air out of my tires really quickly. I'll just let it let air out for about a minute and I should be down to, I think this time I'm gonna go down to about 30 PSI. That'll soften my ride a lot in the Rebel. If it got really soft, I would go quite a bit lower than that. But I think for a blend of um, being on the rocks and moving a little faster on this nicer dirt road, I'll keep it at about 30. All four tires are down to 30 PSI, so off we go. All right, boy, it's a lot smoother ride. I'm able to go faster. And um, my cabinets back there aren't seeming like they're gonna rattle off the walls. I think we've got um, 20 so miles left on this road to get to the visitor center. Once I get to the visitor center, I'm hoping there's a map there and I can figure out where my backcountry camp spot is because it is a wild maze of dirt roads back here. And nowhere in my registration did it say anything about where to check in or any of that. Here's a message, it's park alert. Let's see what it says. Oh, there, I see a map over there. Limited walk-in campsite, availability, reservations strongly recommended. Luckily, I have reservations. Okay, it's kind of a maze of dirt roads. And it says it's only 12 miles from here, but it's Google Maps is telling me it's gonna take an hour and a half. Luckily, it's just past four now, so I might get there before dark. Made it to camp. Wow, this place is gorgeous. Let's see if you can see my views out my front door. This kind of reminds me that um, I think a lot of the state parks maybe have a leg up on some of the national parks. They are just so gorgeous. And um, there's some people down the road a little ways, but I'm pretty much... I don't know, third to half a mile away from the nearest other camper. And um, I feel like I have this place to myself. Get set up here at camp and um, enjoy just a relaxing afternoon. It's been um, a lot of driving to get here. Well, I have driven the last two and a half days to get here. So I'm kind of ready just to kick back and chill a little bit. Maybe take a few pictures. It's gonna be great here tonight. I have another campsite for tomorrow night that should be just as awesome. I can't wait. Big Bend Ranch State Park. This place is awesome. I'm really excited. I got my new drawer system built for the back of the Revel. Uh, see these drawers, they, they slide out and give me tons of access to organize things in the drawers below and then still put gear bags in the space on the top. Um, it's gonna work really good. This is what I had in my previous Revel. I loved it. Uh, in fact, I've had this system. This is the, the fourth version of these drawers that I've built. Um, I've had them in my pickups and um, different vehicles over the years. This one um, we sprayed in Linex. A super durable way to coat these drawers and make them last forever. I don't know if you can hear that, but the coyotes are going crazy and the sun's not even down yet. So I think we're gonna have quite a chorus tonight. I'm cooking up a little broccoli and pasta. It's always great when I get to use my outside table. The whole stovetop runs off of lithium ion batteries. It's an induction cooktop. 
It's really easy to use. I mean, it just works beautifully. It's fast, it's efficient. It's really nice not having to deal with propane. What's even nicer is having this glorious sunset going on and this kind of sweet light. It is really nice out here. I had a really great night last night. It was cool, but not cold at all. In fact, I slept with the window open. I don't know, it was just so quiet. The stars were out. They had a little sliver of a moon. I could hear the coyotes howling all night long. I'm gonna switch sites and go to another another spot in a different place of the park. I intentionally like to change it up where I'm not in the same place each night over and over. I feel like I get to see more that way. And I really, I don't mind breaking camp every day because it's so easy in the revel. Here's to Big Bend Ranch State Park. We're gonna go exploring. This was La Mota too. This was an amazing campsite. I really enjoyed it, but I am also looking forward to going and seeing what some of these other sites look like. <laughs> Okay, we made it back to the main road. I'm gonna now drive out to the east side of the park and just kinda, I just wanna get an overview of this place. I wanna see what there is. Um, kinda getting ideas for really the next trip. And when I come back again, I'll have a better idea of maybe where I wanna camp and things more that I wanna do. Off to the left, I saw a trail that looked like it'd be fun to ride my bike on. So I'm going off on a little mountain bike ride. I just rode a nice little single track trail called the Epic Trail. And now I'm riding this last little bit of road back to the van, where then I'm gonna go and try to find my campsite for the night. Hopefully it's as beautiful as it was last night. Okay, I just swung in the ranger station and confirmed for my night tonight. I'm staying in Mexican One, which is a Supposedly a pretty cool campsite out here. It's a little more open than it was last night. So I don't know, it'll be okay. And um, the rangers here have been really helpful and friendly. And you can reserve sites here, I think it's five months ahead of time and it's all done online. So um, it's always hard for me to know where I'm gonna be in five months from now. But um, boy, if I'm thinking my next trip, I'm gonna try to get a couple of these primo campsites for next time. So we're gonna cruise out here to a um, campsite named Mexican One and check it out. Okay, I just had to make one of those decisions. Um, boy, I went up a few good little rocky steps. It's starting to get really choked in with these ocotillos. And then I came around a corner and there's a pretty nasty uphill with a bunch of big holes and ledges. And I could probably get the Revel up it if I really wanted to, but I don't think I want to that bad. So I'm gonna backtrack out of here and um, we're gonna find somewhere else to camp. I always think it's probably better to not destroy my van in the process of finding one night's place to camp. Live to tell, live to play another day. So um, I think we're gonna just play it safe today. And um, we've had a great, four by four run out here on this road and it's getting, it's actually getting pretty rough, especially for a big van. We'll go on over and um, see what else is available. Ooh, another morning in Big Bend. Well, last night was nice and warm. I slept with the window open again. I actually had to get up in the middle of the night and turn the fan on. That was overheating a little bit. But um, beautiful nights here. There's been very little wind. It's just been um, really good sleeping. I, I kind of can't believe it's towards the end of January and we've got weather this beautiful. But I guess that's why I came here, is for that. Um, I've been getting up every morning, trying to go on a little walk, explore kind of the area. I rolled into this camp um, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes before sunset. And sorry I didn't film that part, but I got really excited because I knew it was gonna have a really awesome sunset. And I wanted to make sure to get some still photographs of that. So um, here's a few of those. 
but it was amazing. It was one of those sunsets. I was kind of tired from exploring the park all day. I'd been driving a lot, went on that big mountain bike ride. I usually find that those times when I want to photograph the least is usually when I get the best results. So I went ahead and um, set everything up and photographed and I was really glad that I did. Today we go over to Terlingua and Terlingua is this cool ghost town that's um, now occupied but it's a really cool little place. It's really quirky and fun. See what it offers. I'm gonna pack up camp and start heading down towards the river. All right, we're off. Oh, I keep saying we. I'm used to saying that, I guess. I'm off. <laughs> Made it to the highway here. I'm right, Rio Grande's right over there. Um, but I am airing up my tires now. I have, I have an air fitting in the very back right next to my bumper and it'll allow me to easily air up the back tires. I can actually stretch it around and hit the front tires off of it too. But I have another one under the hood right next to the compressor that allows me to air those up as well. So this is super easy. I have this removable hose. I just put it down here. It's airing up. I've had it at 30 PSI the last three days. And I'm gonna take it back up to 70 in the back, 50 in the front. just a couple minutes so it's January 24th and I am happy in shorts and a t-shirt today the weather down here is awesome boy after being on dirt and rocks the last three days the pavement here sure feels nice and smooth feels really good to be buzzing down the blacktop So I was just driving down the highway and I look off and I see all these really cool pocketed rocks, we call them Wacos. And um, I saw a little road pulling in here, so I had to pull in and just check it out. And this is like being on the moon. This place is awesome. And then I came around, I scrambled over the rocks and there's an old ruins here with um, a really cool looking adobe building that I'm getting ready to go check out. Part of the wall is just eroded away. Okay, that was a really neat little diversion. I love just stumbling across awesome little spots like this and having the time to just stop and check them out. Well, this is kind of exciting. I can see Mexico from here. I can throw a rock and hit Mexico. So we're right here on the Rio Grande. Uh, I'm so tempted to get out and paddle right now, pull my kayak down. 
it's kind of shallow it's not flowing that much um, there's a little tiny rapid here although I don't think it's deep enough but it's pretty cool that we're on the Rio Grande and um, Mexico is literally right there and I'm gonna keep looking for some places to paddle there's a sign right as I drove down here to the river it said $5,000 fine for crossing the border so cool to be right next to another country. I wished I could just hop the border in the Revel and go tour Mexico, but that'll be another trip. I'm here at the ghost town of Terlingua, Texas. This place is full of character and I love it here. It's, um, they call it the ghost town, but it's a pretty poppin' ghost town out of all the ghost towns I've seen. There's a steady flow of people coming in and out of here, but it has everything you'd think of a ghost town. It's got a creepy old cemetery. It's got old adobe buildings that are in different stages of decay. And then it's got a lot of other things going on. There's art galleries, there's the famous Starlight Theater, which is a really cool restaurant and place to see music, and then the Trilingua Mercantile, which is a pretty awesome little um, gift shop of sorts, but Trilingua style. So I'm, I'm just wandering around here looking at some of the old mine shafts, checking out some of the old buildings, and did I mention it's January 24th, I'm in a shorts and a t-shirt, and I'm a little on the hot side right now. So I'm in the old Trilingua Ghost Town Cemetery. This is a pretty wild place. I'm seeing lots of graves that are literally just a pile of rocks with an old cross. The crosses look like they've blown over, many of them. I guess the cemetery um, dates back to turn of the century. There was a lot of mercury mining, gunfights, an influenza outbreak, which kind of sounds familiar to what's going on today. But um, man, a lot of um, graves here that have no markings, no nothing. It's almost impossible to tell who is here. I mean, maybe I have a map somewhere that tells who's, who's where, but I kind of bet not. Um, at this point, some of them are nothing more than, you know, a pile of rocks. Um, like, here's a good example right here. It's really interesting. Kind of makes you feel like, um, you know, what we feel is so permanent is really not that permanent in the grand scheme of things. But it's, um, it's really interesting to be here and look around and take this place in. So I can't think of many things that are more Wild West-like than um, Terlingua and this cemetery. This is like right out of a movie. Um, but a really amazing place. It's just a perfect day here. Okay, so I just pulled into the most unromantic side of van life and RV travel. I'm here in a little parking lot in the nook of two intersections really it's like two highways meet here they make a T the awesome thing about this spot is it is free and it's right outside of Big Bend National Park which sometimes getting campsites in the park is really hard all I need is a place to park for the night I'm not looking for anything fancy I don't need water I don't need plug-ins I don't need any of that just a place to park for the night so I can um, keep going tomorrow. And tomorrow night I'm gonna have an awesome backcountry campsite in the park. So, van life at its least romantic. Good morning from the dusty, dirty, noisy lot here at Terlingua. I just did a post on my Instagram about how spots like this are actually one of the better qualities 
of van life and being able to stay comfortably in a in kind of a normally inhospitable spot is a really great advantage and it's it's not necessarily a bad thing that we can stay in places like this in fact i think it's one of the best things because imagine you're trying to stay in a place like this if you were in a tent um, it would be awful with rigs like this guy rolling by all night long Today is gonna to be awesome. I'm going into Big Bend National Park. I've got a backcountry site tonight, and um, I'm gonna fuel up. I'm gonna check email and check in with the world a little bit here for a minute, and then we're off to the backcountry of Big Bend National Park, and we're gonna camp in what I hope is gonna be a really pretty place tonight. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna mask up and get some groceries for the next four days at this little market here just outside of Trilingua. Okay, that was a great little store. Got everything I needed and we're off to the back country. Little uh, van life tip here, working with a small fridge. I might as well cut off the stalks of this broccoli and throw it away here at the store rather than haul this around with me for the next week and have it taking up space in my fridge. Ooh, that fits much better. What a great little store. They had everything I need. Now I'm restocked. Let's get into the park. All right, here's a pretty good spot. I'm pulled off the side of the road and we're gonna air down. Mercedes has this cool little pocket here under the driver or the passenger seat. I like to keep my ARB. All right. That's 30 PSI. Now I just got to do that three more times. Perfect. One more to go. Perfect, there's 30. Oops, 28. Okay, now we're at 30 all the way around. Put my little easy deflator back in its little cubby. And we're off. It is a lot better. This is an amazing ride improvement. And you also get the added benefits of traction. And if you get into sand or you know snow or really soft stuff, you can really air these down to almost nothing. And um, then have the ability with the onboard air compressor to air them back up where they need to be. Well, looks like here's my old ore road turning off. This is where it turns into more of a four x four road. line as always that makes a huge difference it's 
so the road getting back in here has been pretty good with a few fair to poor exceptions but for the most part it's just kind of slow going but um definitely doable I'm, I'm really glad i've got the agile rip kit on my revel i think that's it helping to sway a lot on some of this off camber rocky ledgy kind of stuff. It's keeping it from wanting to rock back and forth. Um, but the, the airing down the tires has made a tremendous difference. And then just, you know, driving reasonably and going slow and taking your time, um, that, that accounts for a lot. So it looks like by GPS, I've got maybe, I don't know, four or five more miles. I'm starting to come across some of these other camps that are back here and um, they look they all look really nice so far so I'm excited to see where I'm gonna actually be tonight but um it's beautiful back here Big Bend backcountry it's an amazing place okay here's a little nasty spot all right made it through there was one uphill that I didn't film that definitely had a lot more rocks and ruts and I had to put it in low. Um, probably in this whole trip in Big Bend Ranch and then now here I've put it in low range twice total. So you know I find that the sprinter does really good in four or high but every now and then you'll need to climb up some little ledge or something and having that little extra bit of torque that low gives you just makes all the difference. The bushes are getting a little more overgrown over here. Parts of this trail are really, really rocky. I don't mean like huge rocks, but just like all rocks you're driving on. And then there's a couple places where it goes up and down these washes and you have some ledges that you have to go up and down these ledges. And I just went over one section that was kind of off camber and had the van leaning quite a bit. I just ran into a ranger back there and she warned me of a spot where a fella in a unimog flipped it over there a couple years ago. So we're gonna try not to do that for sure. Well, we made it to Telephone Canyon. Why do I keep saying we? It's it's me. I'm the only one here. It says so right here, Telephone Canyon. So our camp is just down this road. Um, I don't know, it doesn't look too far on the map, but um, we are close and I'm kind of ready. We've had a long day of driving on these dirt roads and going over ledges and um, it's gonna be really nice to set up camp and kind of relax a little bit. standard park service bear box wild animal food container locker it's pretty just kind of wide open over here and then here's the trail I think I'm gonna go for a little hike up here I think I'll get kind of settled into camp and then um, I'll hike up there a little bit let's see we're getting some very mild uh, desert pinstriping. It's basically scratches from sharp branches. But luckily with the silver, this is one of the main reasons I really like the silver color, is the scratches don't really show up. Yep, should be good. Got my sticker in one place. So I'm getting ready to take off on a little hike here. I'm gonna go up Telephone Canyon and just poke around and see what's going on. Um, but I thought this might be a good opportunity to share with you a few of the thoughts of things that I might bring with me on a day hike like this. I thought you guys might be interested in seeing. 
Um, first off is I bring a little lightweight backpack. This is a little Deuter um, Speedlight 24. It's been a great pack. I've had this thing all over the place and it's super light, but um, has enough room to carry what I need for a day hike. Um, almost always will bring a headlamp just in case I get out a little later than I'd want, which does happen more often than you think. Um, water and an appropriate amount for the distance you think you're going. I think I'm just going for an hour or so, so I'm not bringing too much, but if it was an all day hike. I'd either bring a water purifier or more water if, um, if I couldn't find water. Like a place like this is a great example of a place you'd probably want to carry more water less than bringing a purifier and just um, purifying water as you go. Um, snack, I've got a couple of kind bars, a big puffy jacket, not really a big puffy jacket, but a puffy jacket just in case. Um, and then I usually bring my Garmin InReach Explorer. This is a satellite messaging device. It allows me to then get a message out if I have a problem, especially when I'm by myself. Um, you just never know, you know, if I hurt my knee again or something, it could be um, really great to have this thing and be able to get a message out and get help if I needed it. Um, so all that, um, I'm gonna bring a hat, sunglasses. I always have my pocket knife, um, that sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna wear appropriate footwear and um, mostly I'm gonna go and have a great time. So here we go, let's go up Telephone Canyon. Cool cactuses. Ooh, it's getting warm. I think I got a shed there. Anytime you're taking off clothes in January, that's a good thing. All right, much better. Shed in one lair, it feels good. Although the sun's getting ready to go down over the mountains here, and I think I'm gonna quickly wanna put that back on as soon as that happens. Ooh, through these yuccas. Oh, they're sharp everywhere. Well, right down here on the other side of this ridge, that's where my revel is. That's where I'm camping. Okay, here's some bear scat. That's what I'm calling bear scat. I don't know, maybe it's from something else. But that sure looks like what I think of as bear scat. I've got to go over this ridge and then one more ridge and then I should be able to see the van from there. How awesome is this? It's January. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and I'm back here and I haven't seen a single person. I've got this place all to myself or at least it feels that way. I think now I'm going to take a shower out the back of the rubble. I've got uh, plenty of water and I'm just going to do a little quick navy, navy bath and um, it's going to be really nice. Okay, so just had a great shower out the back door of the revel. Ah, oh, so nice. And now I am cooking up some broccoli and then there's going to be some pasta and I'm making dinner here. I love this little flip out table here. Um, it's not always that we get to use it because it's kind of got to have um, not be rainy or not be windy or not be a lot of things but it is so handy and when we can actually cook out here, which I've done almost every night of this trip, um, use it to cook out here, it is so nice. Just hanging out, cooking on the front porch. What a great day exploring Big Bend National Park. Gosh, um, I'm, really, I'm really stoked on this area. I'm gonna work on my computer a bit here, work on some of these images that I shot today, and then I'm gonna turn in early. And tomorrow, we've got a whole nother fun day. Good morning. Gosh, what a great night. It was super quiet. The stars were out, but um, it's even a better morning here. The sun just hit camp and I decided I'm gonna cook up some breakfast burritos here. So I've got a little sausage cooking. I've got some tortillas, some avocado and some cheese. And I'm gonna piece it all together and make some breakfast burritos this morning. My number one 
priority in cooking is trying not to make any more dishes than I have to. Um, that even um, sometimes precludes cooking certain things. Um, but that's just the way I roll. And um, this will be a, pretty much a one pot wonder. I'm using the Rebels induction cooktop. This is an electric stove. Plugs in right here. And um, works really good, actually. It's really efficient. It runs off the batteries. Um, and now with this lithium ion battery system that the, the new Rebel has, boy, I don't even worry about battery power. Um, we've got the solar, and then it also charges up the batteries as we drive. So um, this is a really awesome backcountry ready system to keep you powered up cooking heating cooling whatever you need to do you've got the power to do it so i'm often cooking on a hill where my table is some sort of a slant so i usually try to figure out which way is down and be able to pour my egg in the proper place where it doesn't go the wrong direction Steamed tortillas. Oh yeah, look at that. Sausage, cheese, egg, and avocado. Mmm, so good. Love it. Nothing better than a breakfast burrito in an amazing place. And standing in the morning sun Warm you up. Yeah, life is good. Start your engines. We're off. We're going southbound. We came in from the north. The ranger said the road's a little smoother to the south. So, you know, I figured we got through the, the stuff on the north and um, no need to mess with that again. Let's go somewhere new and explore someplace we haven't ever been. So um, we're leaving here at um, Telephone Canyon number two camp. It was awesome. Um, had a great time, quiet night. I, I literally didn't even hear a plane the whole time we were here. It was so quiet. Let's go. We're going to have a different experience tonight with where we're going. We're going to Chisos Basin, and it's a very popular, very probably crowded and um, noisy, but very beautiful campsite. So I can't wait. Okay, so there was a funky little spot where I thought I might hit my running boards and maybe drag my back bumper going off that ledge. So I pulled out my shovel, which, oh my God, thank you so much for Demos making such a rad shovel. I took out the shovel and just grabbed some rocks and loose dirt from the side and filled in some of the holes and made a little bit more of a ramp to go down and it worked like a champ. I am on the south side of the ore road now um, the road quality is getting nicer. This is definitely an easier side to come into if you want, if you're looking for that. But out of the corner of my eye, I saw a grave here. This is kind of wild. I'm just driving along and here is someone's grave. It's like somebody named Juan and he maybe died in 1932. Crazy stuff you see back here. This is cool. Judging from the GPS, we're getting pretty close to the blacktop and um, it's gonna be nice. I always like being off-road and then I always like being back on the road too. I'm to the blacktop now, and I'm just gonna air up my tires real quick, get them back up where they should be for driving on the highway. Uh, 
What an amazing four wheel drive trip. The camping back there is incredible. The old ore road in Big Bend is definitely something you should put on your bucket list. All right, there it is, Blacktop. We are back in the land of cars and smooth roads. Please come out and enjoy. If you do come to some of these backcountry spots, please make sure that you're prepared. You have any kind of rescue and safety gear with you to make your journey not only successful, but also safe. You are gonna be you know, really reliant on yourself and your group when you're coming out to places like this because, um, boy, to get help out here is hours, if not um, days away, depending on what happens. So um, make sure you're prepared, make sure you have your kit together, make sure you know how to use it, and most importantly, have a great time. Famagogo out, we'll see you next time.